Okay, today we're going to be watching a recommended video. It is by the Fat Electrician. That is one of the most popular channels that we watch <laughs> on my channel. And this one is The Last War Chief Joe Medicine Crow. Yeah, like I said, this was recommended in the comments. It looked really good. And now we're going to react to it. Let's see what it's about. And I quote, with the incense of burning cedar and the singing of sacred songs, I came into the world. I was singing too, although they probably thought I was wailing. <laughs> Today we're talking about Dr. Joe Medicine Crow, the last man to perform all four tasks to earn himself the title of war chief, and he managed to do Ooh. it all during World War II. But first, a word from today's sponsor. This okay. video is brought to you by Ground News. Hold on. Uh, in all caps and in red, avoid using phrases like, quote, but first, a word from today's sponsor. Try to incorporate a natural segue into the ad. All right, you want a segue? I'll give you a segue. <laughs> Whoops. Ground News isn't a news source, but the world's first news comparison platform. They collect news from over 50,000 sources, sticking it into one convenient app, allowing you to compare all the news coverage in one convenient location. Allowing I've you to heard of swipe this. over to read different headlines for the same exact story, being able to tell which outlet is biased and which isn't, and how factual their articles actually are. And if that wasn't enough, they also have cool features allowing you to search for news on an actual map by geographical location, and they have blind spot coverage showing you articles that are receiving yeah. little to no coverage in the mainstream media. So for example, just to show you how this works, I have oh. Oh man, I bet that shows all kinds of biases. That's Personally super cool. Been following the story I have heard of this. California, where an angry otter keeps kicking surfers off of their surfboards. For days, she's been <laughs> evading arrest from authorities after committing what they're calling longboard <laughs> larceny. And utilizing ground news, I can see that today alone, there's been over 49 news outlets all reporting on it. And it allows me to quickly swipe through the most popular headlines, seeing that they're all virtually identical and highly factual, which allows me as a news consumer to conclude that everybody on the political spectrum, both left, right, right and center all thoroughly enjoy the world's cutest carnivorous mammal messing with hippies born on october 27 1913 joe was raised on the crow indian reservation in Montana. you know what i think that's a great idea by the way i know that that's just his ad but i really like that um i have heard of this once before I kind of want to try it, actually. Under the watchful eye of his grandfather, the original Chief Medicine Crow, who was considered to be one of the greatest Crow war chiefs of all time, and he would raise Joe to follow in his footsteps. As a child, he was taught how to hunt, fish, track, ride a horse with no saddle, and to make him tough, his grandfather would make him run outside in the snow barefoot and bathe in frozen rivers. All of which were Super skills cool. and traits that Joe would need to even stand a chance at becoming a war chief like his father and his grandfather. You see, to become a Crow war chief, you had to complete four tasks. You had to lead a successful war party where neither you or any of the men you were leading got hurt. You had to disarm an enemy in combat. You had to steal an enemy's horse. And finally, you had to perform a counting coup. Most people describe a counting coup as touching the enemy without actually having to kill them. I don't know if that's the PG rated version or if they're just underselling it because it's way more badass than that. One of the ways that you can do this hmm. is to run up and touch the enemy with your hands, your bow, or your coup stick and escape unharmed. And this is seen as an extreme act of bravery because rather than shooting at the enemy from far away with a bow or a gun, it takes a real badass to roll up on somebody that wants yeah. to kill you, get within arm's reach and go boop, and then get away completely unharmed. Like you're just <laughs> letting the enemy know, by the way, you're completely outclassed and yeah. you should probably reconsider what you're about to do next. The other way you can perform a counting coup is to force the enemy to surrender without actually having to kill them. It's the equivalent of making your enemy say uncle or tapping them out. And here's the kicker with the whole thing. This criteria was deemed incredibly hard to achieve back in the day when it was invented hundreds of years ago. And it was only accounting for Native American tribes going up against other Native right. American tribes. <laughs> you said World War II, meaning we had a lot more technology and scary weapons to, or to mess like with dudes with muskets it definitely was not criteria that was created with the foresight to account for the battlefield changing to incorporate machine guns and tanks yes. let alone the fact that horses aren't even the main mode of transportation at this point that's what i was wondering too i was about to ask like okay this has to do with some horses <laughs> what do you do at that point time it's going to be hard enough to find a horse on the battlefield let alone strategically transfer it to an alternate location but that's what joe medicine crow has to do if he wants to become a war chief but again all that's just assuming that there is a war for joe to even fight in because it's only 1929 he just graduated eighth grade and he's about to go off to college to achieve his associate's degree which he does and then he goes on to achieve his bachelor's degree and then he goes on to become the first crow native american <laughs> from his tribe to achieve a master's degree 
He then begins working on his doctorate degree, but that gets stopped in its tracks because 1941 nice. Pearl Harbor happens, America enters World War II, and life in America, as everybody knows it, gets flipped upside down. In the days immediately following Pearl Harbor, hundreds of thousands of Americans would volunteer to join the U.S. military, but Joe Medicine Crow was not one of them because... This World War II, I mean, I know that it was a crazy time, but like, we've gone over so many videos where so many different crazy things have happened um, during World War II. Just, yeah, it was a really crazy time. Like, I already thought it was crazy, but there were so many things simultaneously happening in the world as well as crazy. As at the time I keep, I've said crazy like 10 times now. Time he was Sorry. 28 years old and in 1941 at 28 on the dot, you were deemed too old to serve in the U S military. So unable, oh, to fight, really? unable to finish his doctorate, he would take a job as a teacher in a native American boarding school in Salem, Oregon for a short period of time. He would pretty much immediately quit that job and go to work in the shipyards in Washington to at least help the war effort in any way that he could. And he worked his ass off in that shipping dude. yard for a year until November of 1942 when the United States government would strike down the age restriction on joining the military and Joe was officially able to join if he wanted to. Which is exactly what he does because he's got to go wow. over there and end this shit so he can go back to school and earn his doctorate degree. So fast forward March 1943, Joe's been through training and he is now all the way over in France on the Siegfried Line. If you don't know, the Siegfried Line was Germany's last line of defense before being able to actually enter Germany. It was essentially their entire western yes. border that had been fortified to resist invasion. We know this. We've seen this in another video. Yes. The entire thing was covered with giant concrete spikes known as dragon teeth that made it impossible for tanks or any other type of vehicle to get past them. And then in front of those spikes were my well, most tanks. <laughs> I remember one did. And in front of that was barbed wire. And on the other side was German machine gun nests, mortars, and artillery ready to slaughter any foot soldier that tried to make it through. And Allied forces have been halted here in their tracks since August of 1942. But then in March of 1943, this new guy shows up. He's already got a reputation for being a badass. He's rocking Native American war paint underneath his fatigues. And he's got a yellow painted eagle feather underneath his helmet for protection. Surely this man is the main character. We're going to see what he can do. So Joe's commanding officer pulls him aside and says, hey, look, if anybody can pull this off, it's going to be you. But I need you to take a small group of guys and a bunch of explosives, make your way through the Siegfried line, find a German machine gun nest and completely demolish it. That way we can get some construction guys in there. They can take out the barbed wire and the mines and the dragon's teeth without getting shot at the entire time. And we can start funneling forces in and finally break through this line. So on Okay, so apparently multiple attempts were made to, to break through that. And it wasn't uh, watched very closely or, I mean, I guess it was too huge to watch fully, but. In 1943, Joe Medicine Crow would lead seven other men through the barbed wire, through the mines, through the dragon's teeth, all while being fired at by German machine gun fire and mortars exploding all around him. And they would make their way to the machine gun nests and begin blowing up as many of them as they could. Because of this, Allied forces are finally able to break through the Siegfried line. Joe Medicine Crow is believed to be the first American to set foot into Nazi Germany, and all of the men that he led into this raid were completely unharmed. Meaning that Joe Medicine Crow had just success Check mark. <laughs> you led did it. His first war party, and that he had completed the first task in his journey yeah. to becoming the last war chief. Already Fast forward a couple what? months, Joe's entire unit's clearing out a small German town and they're in the middle of a huge firefight. So Joe decides he's going to cut down an alley so that he can go and get around to flank the enemy. As he's running down the alley, he gets far enough down that he thinks he should be able to turn in and get to where he can find a good position to launch an attack. And that's when he turns into this narrow gate into somebody's backyard. And right as he turns into the gate, he collides helmet to helmet with a German soldier. It is now just Joe, this German soldier in the firefight in the background. Well, so Joe leaps forward, grabs a German German's gun, throws it to the ground, raises his gun at the German, ready to fire, the German standing there completely helpless. And for some reason, Joe's not quite sure why. He decides that he's going to throw his gun on the ground too. And they're going to, and I quote, tear into one another. So they start. Wonder why. We're having a good old fashioned fist fight, and this German ends up getting the better of Joe. He ends up wrestling him to the ground and getting on top of him and oh. hitting him. And finally, Joe would manage to roll him over, get on top, hit him a couple times in return, and then he would begin strangling him. This guy's entire head is turning different shades of red and purple and blue as Joe is quite literally strangling the life out of him. And in which, which I've heard. 
I don't remember where I heard it, but it's not as easy like as the movies make it look. Is that it actually takes a long time and it's really tough. One last tough. bit of desperation. He manages to buck Joe off just enough to be able to gasp out, Mama, Mama. And for some reason, Joe said that this opened his ears and he decided to let the man go. So Joe hops up, grabs his rifle and carries on. I'm not criticizing. I'm just like, that whole situation was like, <laughs> was like a movie. What the heck? To go flank the enemy like he had originally intended to. And at this point, he didn't even realize that he had just completed two more tasks to become a war chief. He had disarmed his enemy and he had committed a counting coup by forcing his enemy to admit defeat without killing him. Which means the only thing Joe has left to do to become a war chief is to find a horse and then steal it. I mean, strategically transfer that piece of equipment to an alternate location. I don't know what you're thinking. Good luck. You're not going to find a horse in the middle of World War II. This is the era of cars and tanks and machine guns. But honestly, you'd be wrong because the German military in World War II actually used horses oh. a lot. So much so that the German military was actually blown away that when America showed up, they didn't have horses at all. They exclusively had motorized vehicles. And this was actually an early indicator to high up Nazi leadership that they were about to get their schnitzel kicked in. <laughs> because this highlighted the enormous gap in logistical power between Germany and America. Amer <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, God. America okay. was creating enough motorized vehicles and refining enough oil and then had the power to ship it all the way across the planet to provide for their entire military. And Germany couldn't pull that off inside of Germany, let alone across the world. Sorry, we're getting sidetracked. Moral of the story, there's horses. Joe has to find one and he has to steal it so he can earn the title of war chief. So fast forward a couple months, Joe gets sent out on a mission being a scout to scout ahead for his entire unit. So while he's out there by himself, he's looking through his binoculars and holy shit, it's a German a horse. SS officer on horseback. An officer on horseback. <laughs> so Joe, using what his grandfather taught him when he was a child, tracks and stalks this guy for miles and miles. And he ends up leading him all the way back to this farmhouse up on a little hill. And there's an entire SS platoon in there, 30, 40 guys, and there's 50 horses God. in the corral outside. So Joe makes his way back to his unit, grabs his commanding officer, is like, hey, I found an entire SS platoon. Let's go get them. So they move out an entire company at dusk and they surround this farmhouse and they're going to wait there overnight with the house completely surrounded and they are going to attack at dawn first thing in the morning. Fast forward, it's an hour before dawn. The Americans have the farmhouse completely surrounded with their guns pointed in at the ready. The Germans have been inside the house all night pre-gaming for the dirt nap they're about to take. And Joe decides to go over to his commanding officer and is like, hey, hear me out. We're here to take out the Nazis. The horses aren't Nazis. The horses are horses. At which Aw, that's point, nice. The commanding officer is like, of course, of course. So he gives Joe permission to go out and try to steal these horses five minutes before they launch their attack. It's now dusk, it's pretty generous. the sun's about to poke up over the horizon, and Joe sets off by himself with nothing but a Colt 1911 pistol and a rope. He sneaks all the way up to the farmhouse. He sneaks past the guy that's supposed to be on lookout, makes his way over to the corral, opens the gate, makes his See, way into the barn. He sneaks past the lookout. Jeez. This is crazy. Opens the barn doors up, gets inside, opens. Stop saying crazy. <laughs> up all the doors on all the stalls for the horses make sure not a single horse is tied down and he finds what he describes to be the most beautiful horse he's ever seen as he ties a double half hitch indian style bridle and he hops on that horse bareback now he only needs to steal one horse but he's gonna steal all 50 why because it's more xp so joe hops up on the horse and starts a stampede with the other 49 horses out of the barn into the corral out of the corral and into the field the germans hearing the commotion run out yeah. with their weapons drawn and begin firing at joe the americans start returning turning fire with their machine guns and their mortars and it is now just joe riding through this open field bareback on a horse surrounded by 49 other horses he's just part of the stampede he starts singing a traditional crow war song as there's nothing but machine gun fires and mortars going off in the background behind him as the sun finally peeks up over the horizon and covers the field in front of him with rays of light he is now this should be a movie if it's not if there is a movie you can let me know but i've never heard of it um it, it, it all sounds like a movie the fourth and final task to become the last war chief 50 times over in a matter of minutes 
And now that we've finally gotten to the point in the story where I've told you how he performed the four tasks, can we finally take a moment to appreciate how utterly ridiculous these four tasks are? I mean, yeah. sure, the first one, lead a war party successfully. That sounds like something you should be able to do as a war chief. However, the other three are just straight dunking on the enemy. Like the yeah, amount of disrespect trolling. in those three tasks is palpable. I mean, let's recap. If you want to be a war chief, you got to roll up on the enemy, touch them with your coup stick. <laughs> <laughs> then after you do that you gotta grab his weapon throw it over there and then you steal his horse and bounce i mean strategically transfer his horse to your stable if that's not straight gangster shit i don't know what is and if you don't believe me let's just hear what joe medicine crow himself had to say about this me i'm a i'm a, a famous horse thief <laughs> like it or not that man was a <laughs> the way he giggled straight grunt and a badass one at that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked again. So Joe and his unit ended up getting diverted over to Poland because war in the European theater is finally starting to come to a close. And as a final act of bravery, him and his commanding officer would end up driving a Jeep through the front gate of a concentration camp, leading all of their men in to free everyone there. Shortly oh. after that, Germany surrenders. Joe ends up returning to the United States. He's given a bronze star for being the first man to penetrate through the Siegfried line, as well as the French Chevalier, which if you don't know, is where you're knighted by France. So yeah, Joe is now officially Sir War Chief Joseph Medicine Crow. Mm, he then wow. separates from the military, returns home to the reservation of Montana, where he goes before his council of elders that includes his grandfather, the original Aww, War Chief Medicine good. Crow, tells him everything that happened while he was away, and they officially award him the title of War Chief. From there, he's wow. unable to go back to school to finish his doctor degree because he is given the position of official tribe historian by the Crow people. However, he would receive an honorary doctorate degree in 1999 for his work in anthropology, officially making him Dr. Sir War Chief Joseph Medicine Crow. This <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> he's probably the only one in the world to have all those titles. This man has more titles than a used car dealership, okay? He would then go <laughs> on to live happily ever after before passing away April 3rd, 2016 at the age of 102 taking with him the title of the last war chief. And I know what you're thinking, because I thought the same thing. Why has he got to be the last war chief? What if another young man manages to pull off all four feats? Well, it's probably not going to happen, at least not anytime soon, because it's because, going to be increased. Because of the horses and the, it's just, he got lucky with the situation in the, in Germany. It's increasingly harder to A, commit a counting coup in the age of machine guns, and that B, too. find a horse on a modern battlefield. You see, one other man came extremely close to achieving the title of war chief, and it was actually Joe Medicine Crow's nephew, Carson Walks Over Ice. In an attempt to follow God. in his uncle's footsteps, God, these people are so tough. Wow. He became a Green Beret during Vietnam, where he committed a counting coup, disarmed an enemy, and led a successful war party. He then proceeded to carry with him on every mission a rope, just in case he could find a horse but he never did. But then one day while patrolling the Ho Chi Minh Trail, he could hear rustling in the jungle off to the side. Something was breaking branches. And as he went in to investigate, it was a VC guiding two elephants that were tied together, using them as pack animals to carry guns and explosives. He dispatched the enemy combatant and stole both of the elephants. <laughs> Upon returning home and- I can see stealing a horse, but how do you get an elephant to-, to how do you do that? You, It's not like he, he was- experience with elephants right what the heck his war deeds to the council of elders they would inform him that he would not be granted the title of war chief because as it turns out elephants aren't horses so <sighs> that's not fair it would be way tougher to get an elephant to follow in you in conclusion the world is going to continue to have knights and sirs and ma'ams and lords and ladies and doctors and college graduates and anthropologists and grunts and brave warriors but the world very well may never have another war chief ever again. But when we did, his name was Joseph Medicine Crow, the last war chief. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is like, comment, subscribe. Go check out thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. I loved this one. It was so good. That was amazing. Thank you for recommending it to me. If you have any more recommendations, you can leave them in the comments. I do read them. Keep them saved. It might take me a little while, but I do pay attention to that. I think I saw a thumbnail when I searched this video. I saw a thumbnail of um, Obama giving him an award. 
So that's really cool. I don't think I learned this in school or when I was learning about history. I wish that they would teach us this because it just makes it so much more interesting and fun to learn our history. But yeah, I'll leave the video in the description for you. As always, go support Fat Electrician. We love his channel. It's just so good. Everything on this channel is, is awesome. Yeah, again, let me know if there's anything you want me to watch. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.